What is up guys, it's your boy Rick Kakis, and today we are going to be discussing something that happened within Destiny 2 that is absolutely massive if you have a free to play or low spend account. And what that is involves the introduction of the Riven's Wishes quests. These are going to be weekly quests where you can earn a wish token to spend on a variety of incredible items. And while most people, including myself to be honest, were distracted by the fact that you could unlock guaranteed red border raid weapons, you can actually also spend those tokens on Lightfall Year Exotics. Now, what's the big deal? Well, if you have a completely free-to-play account, like you do not own Lightfall, you can still get these exotics with wish tokens. So instead of having to spend like $40 on Lightfall to have access to these through the next few weeks, you can get them and massively increase the power of your account. So in this video, we're going to be discussing the best of these available exotics and the order in which I would recommend unlocking them. And so let's get started here. And first things first, we have a big warning, and that is because these are Lightfall exotics, a lot of them affect the Strand subclasses that were introduced in Lightfall, and you still need to own Lightfall to have access to Strand. So, for the Warlock, you have the Swarmers, for the Hunter, you have the, not even gonna bother, Facade, and then for the Titan, you have the Abandoned Leap Legs. Even though you can buy these, if you don't have Strand, they're not really gonna do much. And a similar warning for some of the exotics that affect stasis. If you are a free-to-play account that doesn't own Beyond Light, I would warn against buying the Baladros Wrath Weavers uh, for the Warlock, as well as the Camdus Ridge Landscap for the Titan. Again, you wanna own the actual subclasses that those exotics affect before gaining access to them. And therefore, we're not going to be including any of those exotics in this tier list. With that being said, they're not completely useless. For example, with the Abeyant Leap Legs, they say gain woven mail when suspending targets. Now, even if I switch over to an Arc subclass and I use the Wishkeeper Bow that you only need to buy this season to gain access to, I can suspend targets with that and actually gain woven mail from the Abeyant Leap. So there is some minor synergies that you can accomplish with elemental weapons just thought I would mention that, but again, for the most part, you shouldn't be buying these. So, with that important information covered, here is the number one exotic I would buy as a free-to-play account, and that is the Cenotaph Mask for the Warlock. This thing is nuts. It is a heavy ammo generator. As long as you're using trace rifles, which, you know, are not that bad, easily incorporated into your build, you simply shoot a high value target, that's going to make that target glow red, as you can see, and then when your allies take that guy down, it's going to spawn heavy ammo for your allies and special ammo for you so that you can top back up on your trace rifle. So this thing is being incorporated more and more into end game PVE teams. I've started to use this quite a bit in stuff like Grandmaster Nightfalls. Uh, the gameplay you're seeing is in the new dungeon boss fight. It's incredible there. In raid teams, people are using this. It's just such a consistent and easy way to get heavy ammo, and who doesn't want a bunch of heavy ammo? Like, heavy, I mean, the Galahorn. Who doesn't want infinite Galahorn shots? Like, everybody, right? So, this thing is fantastic. I shouldn't have used Galahorn as an example, because you gotta buy the $30 uh, 30th anniversary thing, but I digress. Moving on from there, guys, the second exotic I would unlock here is for the Titan, and it's the Pyrogale Gauntlets. So, this makes your burning mall into a nuclear bomb. Now, I will say Burning Maul used to require the Forsaken expansion to use, but I believe with subclass 3.0 they made it free to play. I asked a bunch of people, I even tweeted about it, and everyone was saying it's accessible as a free to play account, so if I'm wrong, don't blame me, but seriously, these things are incredible. Uh, the actual damage you're able to achieve with one Burning Maul is extremely high. It's basically the damage of an entire long lasting Burning Maul condensed into a few seconds, and that's the point, right? You pop your super with one slam, you get out a ton of damage, 
And then you're out of your super. You're back to damaging that boss, you know, with your weapons again. So just the overall damage output you're able to achieve with the Paragale Gauntlets is very, very impressive. Having a super, super high damage instant activation super does wonders for damage output. Now, moving on from there, the third one of these exotics I would unlock is actually back on the Warlock here. It's the Briar Binds. So these things are gonna turn your child of the old gods into a darn adult of the old gods. My goodness, it improves your void souls. I did a whole build video on how insane these things can be because what they're going to do is improve your void soul duration. Also, your void souls will gain increased damage and durability as they kill enemies. But most importantly, you can pick up your deployed void souls and redeploy them. And every time you do that, it resets their timer. So what this lets you do is deploy more than one Void Soul at once because you keep picking them up and redeploying them and then deploying new ones and resetting the timers of the old ones. So like in that build video, I got to what, like five or six Void Souls all out at the same time? Like it is just crazy. Your entire screen can be Void Souls sucking Every, oh, I gotta rephrase that, damaging everyone, right? So really, it can do some impressive things. I've been on the receiving end of True Vanguard using these in PvP, and it's not pleasant. Like seriously, the radius of those Void Souls are absolutely massive with the Briar Binds. But moving on from there, guys, uh, next up for the Hunter, we have the Moth Keeper's Wraps. So, these are super, super interesting. They're actually gonna completely replace whatever your equipped grenade is with a new Cage of Loyal Moths grenade, and they're going to release uh, a blinding moth that will do an arc damaging explosion and or a void moth that will go and seek out you or nearby allies and give them an overshield. But the really cool thing about these is that you can create an entire moth build, and again, I did a video on that linked up above, with the help of the X Dyrus Exotic Grenade Launcher. This was the Seasons Pass Exotic, so it was available completely free to play from Season of the Witch, and normally, by itself, the X Dyrus, upon getting a kill, will spawn one of those arc blinding moths, which is pretty sweet. But if you're using the Moth Keeper's wraps, every single time you would trigger that moth spawn, it also spawns the Void Moth. So that means nearly every single kill you're getting with that grenade launcher, you're spawning a blinding moth and an overshield moth to help you survive. It's really, really powerful, actually. However, it is time to move on to number four, and that's gonna be, again for the hunter, the Triton Vice. Now, this is just going to significantly improve your glaive. It's gonna make it do more melee damage when surrounded. It's going to uh, overflow around into the magazine when you get final blows, all of that stuff. Like, it does a bunch, and so if you're making a Glaive Hunter build, the Triton Vice is absolutely an option. However, it's really not too meta, and at this point, you may be better off spending your wish tokens on other things. It's really those like front, you know, four ish exotics that are actually quite good. The Triton Vice is, again, totally decent if you want to make uh, a Glaive build, and then after that, guys. Position number five uh, is going to be for the Titan, the Arbor Warden. These are very, very unique. Uh, they let you turn your class ability essentially into a grenade. So it's going to deploy whatever your class ability is, but in grenade form. So you could chuck your barricade across the map. Now, these are mainly used right now with strand builds using the Dranger's Lash so that, as you can see, you can throw your suspending barricade, right? But again, if you're a free-to-play account, you don't have access to strands, so, like, I guess you could throw your Bastion barricade th that heals or gives a an overshield to allies, like, across the map, but we're getting pretty niche there. These things don't see a ton of play. And then, very last on the list here, guys, we have the Speed Loader Slacks. Um, if you are a huge PvP player, you may want to put this higher on the list. It provides some pretty niche but important stats for PvP. 
PvP, uh, when you dodge and stuff, handling, airborne effectiveness, and all of that stuff. But again, like, uh, it's only if you're really into PvP, like, you're not really going to use these at all in PvE. And so guys, there you have it. Definitely a pretty exciting thing that these free to play accounts can gain access to these exotics and potentially, you know, create some brand new builds and boost their power. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.